The definition of an unreasonable search and seizure is anything that the five justices on the U.S. Supreme Court consider an unreasonable search and seizure. Basically, it's a search and a seizure that takes place without a lawfully issued search warrant or when there's not probable cause to believe that a crime was committed by the individual. There's no strict definition. There historically has been a definition of unreasonable search and seizure as a, a two-part reasonable expectation of privacy test. Uh, however, recent U.S. Supreme Court cases have relied less on that test and focused more on whatever is necessary to prevent a surveillance state, essentially. Our rights to privacy are going to be affected by the increase of technology constantly. We already see it happening with um, the advent of social media and cell phones and wristwatches and all these smart devices that we have. The Carpenter case, uh, what came down from the United States Supreme Court, said that Cell phones have so much personal information and contain so much more personal information than would ever have been accessible in the pre-digital age that special protections are required and specifically in that case held that uh, a warrantless search uh, of a smartphone specifically was unconstitutional. The biggest issue with social media is that people don't realize that they don't have that privacy right that people expect. So most people think, you know, my, my whole life is private. No one has ever been able to intrude before. But with social media, everything that you post is basically accessible by the government, by the actual company itself for their own purposes, for whatever reason. The Katz decision in, I believe it's 1967, uh, was the decision that instituted the reasonable expectation of privacy test, and that was because the court essentially developed this new test, did not want to apply the old, the old test, because it really was not appropriate for this new technology. If we're wearing like a watch, or if we have any other GPS type connect device to our car, or something like that, anything like that, the law is already very clear that the government can get that information with a search warrant. Through landmark cases such as Katz, Carpenter, and Jones, we have learned the restrictions that officers have on acquiring information in this new digital age. We have a reasonable expectation of privacy that must be upheld and is protected by our Fourth Amendment right. But as a student, what does all of this mean to me? I attend Sherman Oak Center for Enriched Studies, a public high school in Tarzana, California. From the moment I stepped foot onto campus, I questioned my true rights to privacy. I needed answers. So I went to my principal and asked him what real rights to privacy I have in our school setting. On campus, it's, it's a much more limited right for students of privacy because of the safety issues for the number of kids we have on campus. How far should a school go in terms of video surveillance? I think having video in corridors and outside and along parking lots is a good thing because that's generally where folks come in from and where the danger starts. It doesn't usually start in the center of campus. There is an expectation, very limited expectation of privacy. If it's your backpack, it's your backpack. And the problem is that what students don't understand is, is if they say, oh yeah, go, go get that out of my backpack for me, they have totally eliminated any reasonable expectation they might have of privacy. One of the things we tell teachers not to do is don't friend students, even if it's on your personal account, on your personal time. The Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment. Is not to be messed with. Is not to be messed with. Is not to be messed with.